Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 31 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's finally dig into the Logic Pro Mixer, which is a crucial and fundamental aspect of working on your projects. You can open the mixer at any time by going up to the upper left-hand side of the control bar and then clicking on this button that looks like three faders side by side. You can also open and close the mixer at any time by using key command X on your Mac's keyboard. Upon opening the mixer, you'll be treated to a view of every single channel strip in your projects instead of just one or two channel strips as we've often seen in the inspector here. In the mixer that I have on screen in front of us, we have five of the most common channel strips you'll most likely see again and again in your own projects. First, on the left-hand side of the mixer, we have what is called an audio channel strip. An audio channel strip should not be a stranger to you. Anytime that you've recorded audio to an audio track or worked with an audio file in region, there's been an associated audio channel strip for that audio track lane. So for example, if I select this audio Apple loop, and if we zoom in, and I'll just use the vertical zoom, It's that simple. We have audio on an audio track lane, and we have an audio channel strip associated with that track lane. After that, we have what is called a software instrument channel strip. Just like with audio, any time that you've laid down a MIDI performance using a controller or a musical typing or Logic Remote, or maybe you brought a MIDI region from the Apple Loops browser or from somewhere on your Mac, or if you use a pattern region or even drummer, these software instrument track types come loaded with a software instrument channel strip. After that, we have what is called an auxiliary channel strip. Auxiliary channel strips are great for routing audio from multiple channel strips to a single destination, whether it be for a fader, to adjust the level of multiple tracks at the same time, or to process multiple channel strips with the same effect. An effect like reverb or delay is a great candidate for this sort of routing. For today, I'm just gonna give you a bare bones view of auxiliary channel strips and what they do, but in the next video, we'll dig in deep into what sends buses and auxes are all about. After that, we have the output channel strip, which represents the physical outputs of your interface or device. While some audio interfaces and devices provide more than one set of outputs, for most of us, the output channel strip will be labeled stereo out. So this could be the built-in speakers on your Mac, the headphone output of your Mac, or the main stereo output on your audio interface or USB microphone if there's a dedicated output. And lastly, we have the master channel strip, which is used as a global volume control for all output channel strips. So in our project, we just have the one stereo output. So let's give it a try. You can hear that the master channel strip is adjusting the volume of the production. And we can see that the fader in the control bar is also being adjusted at the same time. This is the same fader as the master channel strip. We can also mute the entire project at any given time by pressing on the mute button in the master channel strip. As well as reduce the level of the entire project by a set amount using the dim button. The dim button is a handy feature if you need to bring your attention to something outside of the project, but you don't wanna stop playback. Maybe you're having a conversation with an artist or a musician. You can just reduce the volume until you're done. At the top of the mixer, there are several different views with which we can use to customize which channel strips we'll see inside the mixer. In the top menu bar in the upper right-hand corner, we can adjust the width of our channel strips. After that, we have several different tabs for either hiding or showing different channel strip types. For example, we could choose to hide all audio channel strips in our mixer, hide any software instrument channel strips, hide or show auxiliary channel strips. We can hide any bus or input channel strips as well as output, the master and VCA faders, as well as any MIDI channel strips if we had them. And in the center in the top menu bar, by default, Logic Pro shows us all channel strips associated with our tracks in our projects, but we could choose to see all channel strips in the project, regardless if they're associated with the track. Cool, so now we see the click channel strip for the metronome. So if we turn on the metronome, I'll use key command K and then press space bar. Ooh. 
We started out by listening to the project with the metronome on, and then I turned it off and then back on. So we can see that the metronome is associated with this click channel strip. And we also have this preview channel strip that allows us to preview audio across the application. For example, if we open the Apple Loops browser by pressing key command O, and then click on an Apple Loop to preview it, We hear this Apple loop through the preview channel strip. And lastly, we have a single view of the channel strips in the mixer. In single view, we only see the channel strips that are part of the signal flow of our selected channel strip. So in the case of our selected Brooklyn kit, our auxiliary channel strip is associated as well with the drum kit via bus two, as well as the stereo output, as can be seen, as well as the master fader. But if we select our audio track and the only other channel strips that are associated with this audio channel strip, is the stereo output, as well as the master fader. Personally, I just leave the mixer set to the tracks view as I personally wanna see every channel strip in my project at any given moment, nothing more and nothing less. From here, our channel strips can be broken up into several different components. Starting at the top, we have the setting field, which up until this point was our way of choosing between different preset sounds and patches in the library. Once again, if we bring our mouse to the left edge of the setting field in the inspector, we get this gray triangle. And if we click, we open the library, with which we can choose a preset patch for our audio channel strip. So now we can see in the setting field that we've loaded the grand piano patch for our audio channel strip. But there are many other functions of the setting field if we click on it. For example, we could try out the next preset channel strip setting, as well as go to the previous. We can bypass all our effect plugins as well as reinstantiate them. We can remove any bypass plugins, remove all empty insert slots, paw through other channel strip settings, and more. For now, let's just skip over the gain reduction and EQ sections and go right down to input. For audio channel strips, the input section is a drop down menu from which you choose the different inputs of your audio interface or USB microphone that you intend to record with to your audio tracks in the tracks area. When you're not recording, the input section doesn't have to be set to anything. For software instrument channel strips, the input section is that of a chosen software instrument plugin that you want your MIDI performance to be performed with. If an instrument plugin is already loaded, we can click on the right hand side of the plugin to reveal a drop down menu from which we can choose between different software instruments in Logic Pro. Or if there's no instrument plugin at all, we can just click on the empty field to load a software instrument. So for your audio channel strips, you choose an input on your audio device when you want to record into your projects. And for software instrument channel strips, you choose a software instrument that you want your MIDI performance to perform through in the input section. After that, we have the audio effect slots with which we can use to process any audio across our projects. Just by clicking on the empty field, we get a drop down menu with different categories to load many different styles of audio effects. For example, if I load Chromaverb onto the synth bells, and if we solo the track and take a listen, We can hear and even see the impact of chroma verb on the synth bell. And when I press the blue power button in the upper left hand corner, I bypass the plugin. So we turned it off and then I turned it back on by pressing on that blue power button again. You can turn off and turn on any plugin at any time by hovering your mouse over the left hand side of each plugin and clicking on the power button that pops up. By clicking on the center of each plugin, we open and close each plugin window. And we can choose to either remove or replace a plugin just by clicking on the right hand side, which will once again reveal this drop down menu. The same goes for instrument plugins. We can power on or off, open the plugin window or close it, as well as choose a different instrument. So I'm going to undo this by using Command Z. Now we've brought back Drum Kit Designer. We can insert another audio effect plugin by clicking on any empty section within the audio effect slots. As well as if you hover your mouse in between plugins, you should see this highlighted line. And if you click, 
you can load a plugin in between the other audio effects plugins. You can reorder plugins just by clicking, holding, and dragging from one slot to the next. You can move plugins from one channel strip to the next just by clicking, holding, and dragging. You can also copy and paste a plugin just by holding Option, clicking, holding, and dragging to copy that plugin. You can also bypass multiple plugins at the same time just by clicking and dragging down the plugin chain as well as power back on. And this applies to any channel strip type. For example, we could apply this reverb of Chromaverb to either our audio channel strip. We take a listen. Or our drums. Or even the entire project as a whole. Now we can return to the EQ thumbnail as well as the gain reduction meter because we have an instance of the channel EQ as well as the compressor loaded. The EQ thumbnail provides you with a quick bird's eye view of any EQ changes you've made to your tracks using either the channel EQ as well as the linear EQ. While the gain reduction meter shows you in real time any gain reduction or limiting that you've applied to your tracks. If we take a look and a listen, You can see that these changes are being noted in the gain reduction meter as I adjust the threshold of the compressor. And when we bypass the EQ, we can see the EQ thumbnail is either highlighted when powered on or grayed out when bypassed. And what's super cool is if we click on the EQ thumbnail, we open the first instance of the channel EQ or linear EQ on our channel strip. And if we click on the gain reduction meter, we open the first instance of the compressor or adaptive limiter or limiter on our channel strip. You can close multiple plugins at any time just by holding shift and clicking on the red closed circle of one plugin to close them all. If we get rid of the compressor as well as the EQ, if you click on the EQ thumbnail, you open a new instance of the channel EQ in the next available slot. If you hold option and click on the EQ thumbnail, the channel EQ gets loaded as the first plugin. Same goes for the gain reduction meter. If we click, we open an instance of the compressor in the first available slot. Or if we hold option and click, we open an instance of the compressor as the first audio effect in the chain. After that, we have our send fields that allow us to route our audio to other channel strips across the mixer. For example, we have our drum channel strip here. If we take a listen, Our drums sound like they're pretty dry. If we now adjust the send level, we send more and more of the drums to this instance of Space Designer via bus two that allows us to introduce some reverb in parallel to this drum track. Again, we'll dig in deep in the sends, buses, and auxes in the next video of our series. And then we have our output section, where in this case, every track and channel strip in our project is being sent to the stereo output. So we can hear every track in our project through our main audio device. So the audio in your projects more or less pass through each channel strip in a downward fashion. In the case of an audio track, the audio enters either through an input of your audio device or plays back from the tracks area of your projects. That audio passes through your audio effects sequentially. So whatever is first will process your audio first. Whatever audio is second processes your audio second, so on and so forth down the line. After your audio effect processing, if you're sending your audio to any other channel strip, that process signal is what will be sent elsewhere. So if we choose maybe bus three, and if we apply some sort of distortion effect, we'll say, maybe a regular distortion, That's our distorted effect. And if we take a listen to bus three at full blast, we're sending this distorted audio track 
to this instance of space designer, which is a reverb. And finally, after our audio effect processing, our audio is sent to our stereo output so we can hear our audio through our speakers and headphones. Similarly, with our software instruments, our MIDI region plays through our instrument plugin, in this case, Drum Kit Designer, which in turn is processed through any audio effects. Once again, we can send the processed audio of our software instruments to other channel strips for further processing. And once again, our processed software instrument audio is sent to the stereo output. So again, we can hear our software instruments audio through our speakers and our headphones. And finally, we can balance the individual levels of the different channel strips and tracks in our projects, as well as their placement from left to right using both the fader and the pan knob. So check it out. If we adjust the faders to start with, I've now adjusted the balance of the synth bells, the drums, as well as the reverb that the synth is being sent to. And if we play with the balance of our channel strips using the pan knobs, However, a super important detail when it comes to the pan knobs is if your channel strip is in mono, which will be noted for audio tracks with the single circle in the input section. If we take a look at the level meter here, it's still a wide level meter, which means that the output is in stereo. So we then need to select each plugin and switch the format from that of stereo to mono. Now we see a thinner level meter, which indicates to us that the input and the output of our channel strips in mono, which means we only have a single signal for our audio track as opposed to a left and right separate signals. If we pan the synth, we will pan the instrument all the way to the left or all the way to the right. However, if any channel strip in our project is in stereo, by clicking on the channel mode button in the input section for our audio channel strip, we've now swapped our channel strip from that of mono to stereo as noted by the interlocking Venn diagram circles, as well as the wider level meter. If we now pan, by default, the pan knob is actually a balance knob. So we'll only hear either the left side or the right side instead of panning the signal all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Take a listen. To truly pan stereo tracks, we either right click or hold control and click on a stereo channel strips pan knob to swap the panning action from balance to stereo. And now we can pan the entire signal. This also can be applied to software instrument channel strips. If we take a look at drum kit designer, Unfortunately, we don't have a mono option with Drum Kit Designer, but some software instruments do provide a mono instance. In this case, Quick Sampler. If we select perhaps from our arpeggiation, take a listen. As you can see, we have a mono instance of Quick Sampler, but the output of the channel strip is in stereo, so I was able to select a stereo panning knob. If we take a listen with Drum Kit Designer and switch to balance, we can also flip the left and right sides of our stereo channel strip by holding command and clicking on the pan knob. So now the right side of the drum kit is on the left and the left on the right. If we take a listen.
as we were listening, I was flipping the left and right sides. And we can also adjust the stereo width of a stereo channel strip just by hovering our mouse until the white handles on each of the left and right hand side of the green ring are bolded just by clicking, holding, and dragging. And of course, we can mute and solo every channel strip in our project just by clicking on the mute and solo buttons. And everything that I've mentioned regarding audio effects, the fader, pan knob, mute, and solo applies to the stereo output as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more in video number 32 in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.